Nick, you know, speaking with us now after making a, a big decision, I think it is, for anyone to call it an end on their career, especially with a, a sublime record that you have, a winning career that you have got. And obviously you described it as it was just time for you to stop. And you explained how you're not... You weren't gifted with the certain aspects of certain ways of going in a sport and you had to work hard for it. You've had a couple of days after the announcement. Have you had an abundance of attention? Obviously, you've got attention from us as well. Have you have you noticed the, the people talking to you about this? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people have said some really nice things about me. I didn't know people uh, felt that way about me and, and the impact, I guess, my career has had on them. And I think that's really special. It made me actually kind of sad and... Uh, but it also made me really happy, you know, that I was able to do that. Um, you know, the outpour of people reaching out to me and, and the replies have been mostly positive. Uh, some people, you know, don't want me to and think I have a little bit more left in me, but my body really disagrees with that. Um, you know, it's been rough. These past three training camps have been... Um, really really hard on me I mean I've had injuries in the past but they just keep reoccurring and when one thing and I spend most of my uh, my training camps doing rehab so like I, I, I spend most of my training camps doing recovery stuff instead of uh, actually training for a fight I think that is time to take a step back and, and reevaluate uh, what you're doing and for me, it's it's time to start focus on some other things in life that um, are going to help set up the best future for me. I I, th- I think it's a very brave decision. I think it's a if if you th- believe it's right, then then it is right because you're the one that has to get up in the morning with the aches, pains, niggles, you know, the stress on the body. You know, only you know this. And I think t- for a fighter to go out on their own terms after leaving a very big mark on, on the thing because let's be honest it's I mean I, I can remember you know first uh, hearing about yourself and w- when you st- first started coming on the scene for, uh, for us over in the UK it was around the same time that Vitor was uh, starting to look a little different shall we say mm. Vitor Belfort he, it, and um, I was questioning Michael Bispin about it and I was saying like you know, you you have uh, people in such situations. Uh, the, the two people I used um, was yourself and uh, oh come on, what's his Vitor. name? No, no, Def. Oh, Matt Hamill. Oh yeah, Matt. Yeah, it was yourself and Matt Hamill. Now you have hindrances, should we say, on what you can do, and then you got the someone like Vitor Belfort who just wanted to. It wasn't cheating at that time because testosterone was still legal. And uh, it sort of really brought it to my attention that some people just get on with it, their, their issues, and then you've got some that just a totally different approach to life, you know, that where they will just keep looking for that shortcut, you know, keep looking. And uh, I, I thought you were very inspirational back then, you know, and, and ever since. So, you know, it's... Uh, and more so for me, because I, I mean, I've, I've obviously got my own problems, like... And it sort of helped me to see people, you know, in sport that do crack on regardless, you know, like yourself. Yeah. Hello? You know, uh, fighting, yeah, sorry, I was getting a oh, call sorry. actually from my mom. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but um, fighting, fighting for me, you know, is something that I, I started doing because it's fun. I didn't uh, do it to to prove anything to anyone or or impress anyone or be cool. And at this point, I am going. I'm putting myself through hell just to make it to a fight, and it's not fun anymore for me. Um, you know, if my body still had it and and I could go get through a training camp without you know like four or five pretty bad injuries that keep me from training. Then, then yeah, it probably would still be fun if I could perform to my best. You know, it would be fun. But I'm not the type of guy that is gonna pump myself full of steroids or something like that just to feel better, just to fight. You know, I I, I take pride.
pride in, in being all natural and not doing stuff like that. And I'm going to be not fighting for a lot longer than I'm going to be fighting. So I'm not going to mess my body up with something that's unnatural. Uh, for me, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's important to me that I perform at my best and, and I just don't want to give people a watered down, um, half-assed version of myself because I can't train for fights. Yeah. Then that is the right decision then, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I'm just curious, uh, you, you say about obviously, uh, the injuries, did you, did you not think maybe about taking, say like a year off? Just taking a year off break, maybe from just like the intense training, any competing, just to kind of recuperate your body to maybe see how you felt after a year. Is that something that maybe you thought about, or is it just you kind of thought, I just, I just don't, I just want to stop now? I don't know. I've just been competing for so long. I mean, mm. I I started competing when I was fourteen in wrestling, and I never stopped. I'm twenty nine right now, you know, so. And I'm almost 30, so that's 16 years straight of competing. And I'm talking about I didn't even take summers off. I just kept going, kept going every year. So I had like a 16-year career in combat sports, in my opinion. You know, I'm, uh, and it's it's just been rough. And I just want to take it back. I don't want to. I don't want to be like, oh well, if. I compete in a year from now and then I have that on my mind and I, I start training for that clean break thing okay. going and set up my future and, and then go from there but it's going to be hard to train for a fight and compete at a high level once I start doing the things that I'd like to do got you no, and, yeah. and throughout your uh, like if you think back to the very early days how have you uh, how have people's perception been like you know when you first said I don't know to your family, friends, etc. You know, I I'm, I want to get into wrestling, etc. You know, what was their first sort of ideas? Have you have you normally had people telling you that you shouldn't or encourage you to go for everything in life? You know, I don't know how things been for yourself. Yeah, I I, I get what you're saying. My friends and coaches and everyone do it, and I was, you know, I started fighting when I was 22, and uh, you know, I was just crazy. Never like really got into street fights. I was a, no, he's a nice guy. So I was like super excited to fight, and I get fired up every fight, and want to go out there and just well. And I, everyone that knows me told me I I could, and you know, I mean, obviously you got your people on the internet that say you can't, but I don't fight to impress anyone. You know, I just did it because it was fun, and in terms of everything, I never really for myself in MMA besides to just be the best version of myself and I don't feel like I'm the best version of myself right now um, or like I used to be so um, once that stops hap- happening you know fighting just stops happening and I don't really want to fight right now so <laughs> I'm, I'm calling it calling it a day I'm packing up Still, you, you you leave a pretty damn good record there, you know, and you you leave a good marker for, you know, for for, I mean, let's 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 talk about like like any other fighter, mm-hmm. that that in itself is a good record. Yeah, it Do you is. Know what I mean, it's, it's, yeah, absolutely. It, it's, yeah. you know, if you if you never fight again, you, you've you've, like you've done better than good in my eyes. But you know? how do you look back at your? say your MMA career for example how how will you look back at it now you, I know it's very early on you just re, you just announced the retirement but how do you look at it now how do you feel about it uh, you know I'm okay, okay with it I'm, there's things that I, I wish I did more of but you're always going to have that mm. again I started doing this because I enjoyed it and I just did it because it was a hobby so I enjoy that I had fun and I got to meet a lot of people and do a lot of things and I'm okay with that, and I made a lot of connections, and really enjoyed my life to this, and it's a big part of why I'm happy with that. I'm not content, like completely, but I mean, I feel like I can do about it with the way that I feel physically. 
yeah, <laughs> limitations. Like kind of like TOTs when his back just gets fused up together. But do you know what? You know, Find me a fighter that was content. No, you, you're, you, you shouldn't. You could have won a hundred titles yeah. at a hundred weight classes, and do you know what I mean? And some fighters just never content. They well, always you've got, you've got um, they, Matt they Sarah. That. Matt Sarah wanted to fight. If the New York card came through, he still said he'd come back and fight. You know, it's it's just <laughs> he it's might be a light heavy now. It might be a light heavyweight in that, but <laughs> there. But it's it's just in people's DNA now. Uh, Nick, what's your future then? What what do you have any particular plans you're looking to make? Is there anything you can talk about now? Anything you can say about? I think that, uh, or well, I know that I'm planning. I would like to start teaching and and open up my own gym and just kind of go from there and just work with whoever wants to work with me and and learn from me in in the Connecticut area. And then, uh, you know, obviously just take it from there and, and see what happens I'd like to get into broadcasting I'd love to start working maybe do, do some commentary I'm, I'm, I've been a very good commentator in the past my knowledge of the sport is very vast and I'm very good at breaking down techniques and learning things and knowing things about fighters And I uh, you know PR stuff I, I, I could also do PR for for a league or you know behind the scenes type stuff I'm definitely looking to get involved in that and uh, get into maybe some public speaking down the road uh, once I uh, I live my life a little more and experience some more things definitely that's something that I'd like to get into it sounds like you've got a heavy investment still in MMA you know which which is great I think it's great that you're not actually leaving the sport which is always yeah, you, a, which is a you, great thing to hear Nick you're, ju- you're just removing your body you're not removing your whole self you're, you're still keeping you're still you're keeping involved there, yeah. yeah no I like it still you know yeah yeah, yeah you don't have a you don't have, you don't have anything negative about it it's just time for your physical fighting career to end but you still want to be part of it and that's you know same with me and Mike you know we, we love the sport and we love being part of this sport and for example, I compete as well, and when I finally hang up the gloves, I'll still be doing this, and I'll still be looking to compete, and still looking to stay involved in some way. And it's it's just one of them things you don't have to. It's stop. exactly it's like um, with myself. Uh, like I'm not totally able-bodied anymore, am I? I'm a bit of a you're, a, you're, bit, you're, a bit of a mess. You're but, useless. Um, you're useless, Mike. <laughs> but uh, it's but I still try and find the things that I can do, and those things that I can do, I, I make sure I do. And you know, I'll, I'll stay involved any way I can. So I, I know how you feel in that sort of situation. That as long as you've got like a foot in the door, so to speak, mm. it's all good. Yeah, you know? and, I, and I think Nick, you you've got that. You've been a great ambassador for the sport. I think it'd be crazy for a promotion somewhere for to not maybe take you on and you know give you like a, a stepping stone, really, supposed into your career into the broadcasting, etc. Uh, and I really quite look forward to your next stages of your career, Nick. How can, for example, uh, people at home follow the the next career, so to speak, the next chapter of Nick Newell? What's your social media links and stuff? It's at Notorious Newell on both um, Instagram and Twitter. So Notorious Newell, one word, all connected. And then on Facebook, it's facebook.com slash Nick Newell MMA. So, all those, I'm really easy to contact. I'm easy to get a hold of. Uh, you guys know that. And, you know, I'm just going to go from there and just see where the road takes me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we will post a picture of Nick on our Facebook page as usual. We'll put the links in. And if you're in the Connecticut area, you know, hopefully in time, Nick will have a place set up and you can all go down there and learn from a guy who's I- got huge amounts of knowledge from the sport. I, I can only see positive things coming. Yeah, it's, I can it's only see be good, positive yeah. things because I know to you, Nick. Um, the physical thing is you've lived with it all your life, so obviously you know it. But to other people, whether you like it or not, it is inspirational, mm. and it does give people, you know, self belief. So whether that's what you want to do or not it happens anyway regardless you've already he's already done it and yeah, exactly. Nick we want to say from our end from our side of it thank you for the time and effort you put into coming into the sport and competing and just doing what you've done really it's been fantastic and you were a credit to the sport 
Thank you so much for everything you did. Thank you very much. Yeah, massive I thank you. No, our pleasure. And, and thank you for joining us and have a great future. Thank you.